So now let's talk about some substitution processes that can happen during a children's pronunciation. So we'll skip this video right now, uh, but if you want, that's an excellent video to watch. Um, but stopping is basically replacing a sound with a different manner of articulation, so a, like a fricative, for example, with a stop, so a consonant where the airflow is completely stopped in the mouth. And so the important thing about stopping is that the place of articulation, so if it's labial, it's the lips, if it's alveolar, it's the alveolar ridge, if it's velar, it's the velum and palatal and so on, and voicing, the fact that uh, voicing is uh, voiced or voiceless, those don't change. The only thing you're doing is changing whatever the manner of articulation was to a stop where the airflow completely stops, right? So, uh, for example, at church, you have the t sh together, right? And so it's sort of a palatal sound. And so, and uh, well, the t is kind of an alveolar, it's kind of a palatal. So you'll probably end up, since in English we only have stops that are labial, alveolar, and velar, you're probably going to end up with the alveolar one. And this is voiceless. Right? That means you're going to end up with the voiceless alveolar stop, right? And we'll see what that is in a minute. You can think about that as we continue through the rest of these examples. Sing, so this is voiceless and alveolar, and it's fricative, so it's going to become again that voiceless alveolar stop. Zebra is voiced and alveolar, right? So it's going to become the voiced alveolar stop. Th the thing in th, like the theta sound, right? Th, that's voiceless. And it's interdental, so it's probably going to come close to the alveolar one because it's within that sort of alveolar range. Mm -hmm. This is going to again go to the alveolar position, but this time it's voiced. And shoes, we have one that's alveolar and voiceless, and one that's al well, this is post alveolar, but in the general, same thing. It's going to go to the voiceless alveolar stop. This is going to go to the voiced alveolar stop. And so uh, let's see what that turns into. Right? So, church becomes tart, right? You've got the voice, in fact, you can see it right there, the voiceless alveolar stop is ta. So sing also will go to the voiceless alveolar stop, ting. Zebra is the voiced alveolar stop, debra. Thing is the voiceless alveolar stop, so thing becomes ting. This becomes dis because it's the voiced one. And shoes, right, the sh becomes the voiceless alveolar stop, stop ta. And z is the voiced alveolar stop, da, so shoes become tood, right? And so something of note, you can actually also do this with nasals, right? So it, I didn't actually show you this here, but sing, that's a nasal. It's technically a stop, but since the uh, air is still coming out your nose, right, If you, you can actually, using the same process, turn sing into the equivalent oral stop, right? So what's the equivalent oral stop? So this is velar. Okay, and this is voiced, so the velar voice stop is g. So in fact, if you were if stopping were happening to this nasal sound, which it can, this is really oral stopping, then this would become g, right? So if you stopped the s to make it t, and you stopped the n to make it g, you would actually end up with sig, right? So this can happen through stopping as well. It's a little more of a, a subtle one. So here again, some examples from this video, which we're not going to watch here. But let's talk about gliding, which again, we have a lovely video, which we're not going to watch. Um, and the idea is simply to replace a liquid sound, in English these are L and R, with a glide sound, which in English is Y and Y. And that's it, like that's the only thing you can do. It's a little bit more uh, precise than stopping, right? So L and R become Y and Y. So lion can become Yayan or Yan. Rabbit becomes Yabbit or Wabbit, right? Look becomes Yuk or Wuk. Rock becomes yak or walk, and story becomes stoi, like with the y sound, or stoi, right, with the w sound. We're not going to talk about what might again cause you to produce y or w in certain contexts. For now, the simple version is a liquid sound becomes a glide sound through gliding. So again, here's some IPA examples showing you the y or the w appearing where the liquid did in each place through the process of gliding. And again, you can see some examples of this. And this again, this is from the Ling Space videos. And now let's talk about fronting. So fronting is really talking about the place of articulation. So remember that in the vocal tract, labial sounds are in the front, then you sort of move back to interdental, then alveolar, then postalveolar, then velar, and so on down the back. So fronting is exactly what it sounds like. You just take a sound that's made, whoop, come back. You take a sound, 
There we go. You take a sound that is made more towards the front of the mouth. Oh, sorry, you take a sound and you move it uh, more towards the front of the sound, right? And so the, the same thing as with stopping. You're not changing the manner of articulation. So if it was a stop, it's still a stop. If it was a fricative, it's still a fricative and so on. You're not changing the manner of articulation. You're not changing the voicing. If it was voiced, it stays voiced, right? You're just moving it further forward, right? So again, you have to think about the features that are associated with this. So with thumb, okay, let's think about this. You're not gonna change the manner, so it's still gonna try to be a fricative. You're not changing the voicing, so it's still gonna be th voiceless, right? But you're trying to move it further front, and it turns out there's one fricative that's voiceless that's further front, and I'll leave you to think about what that is in a moment, right, as we move on to, which is actually, I'll tell you, actually, I'll just show you here so we can see all these explained, is thumb, right? It's further forward, okay? But you're keeping the same voicing, you're keeping the same fact that it's a fricative. So ship is also a fricative. Now, this is post-alveolar, so it's pretty far back, and it's voiceless. You want to, it means you can replace it with fronting with any other uh, fricative that's further front. So if you move it to alveolar, it's sip. If you move it to interdental, it's thip. If you move it to labiodental, it's thip, right? Now jump, remember this is an affricate right here, so it's made up of two sounds, the duh, and then this ja, which is actually pretty far back. It's, it's post-alveolar, just like the sha is. It's voiced though, right? So one very common way, you mean that will happen, one very common thing that will happen is you'll just move it one position forward. So you'll change that ja to a za, and so jump will come out as zump, which sounds totally weird to us because we're so used to hearing ja, but this is a perfectly legitimate fronting process. Okay, chalk, so that sha of that affricate, again, just like the sha and ship can move forward, so a very common mispronunciation of fronting is to move it to that alveolar position of sa, so chalk becomes sock. Right? And all you're doing is fronting the second part of that affricate. So key, this is pretty far back, it's voiceless, right? And it's velar, so, but it's a stop. And remember, we don't have that many stops, right, in English. So there's the alveolar stop T that's voiceless, and there's the labial stop P that's voiceless, right? So that's, those are what fronting can do for you. And then if we have the voiced version, go, there are again only two stops that are further front. There's do, which is the voiceless, the, excuse me, the voiced alveolar, and bo, which is the voiced labial, right? And that's what fronting will get you. And again, you can see some more fronting examples of these. So another one, uh, is, which is really fun, is denasalization, which again, as the excerpt here from Link Space shows you, uh, this happens when your nose can't open up because you have a bad cold, right? So you, normally with nasals, the air comes out the nose, but denasalization means, guess what? You no longer have air coming out the nose. It is denasalized. But like everything else, the stuff that's not the manner of articulation remains the same, right? So replacing a nasal with a non-nasal means you're still going to care where it was pronounced. So the place of articulation is not going to change. The overall manner, right, is not going to change. So it was a nasal stop before, and now it's going to be an oral stop. So stopping will do this same process. We'll take a nasal sound and replace it with an oral stop sound, but you're going to keep that stopping process. And voicing does not change. So it was plus voice before, it's going to remain plus voice. So denasalization is very, very precise. It's more precise than stopping because it means you start with a nasal sound and you replace it with the non-nasal equivalent, which is the voiced oral stop, right? So there are really only three possibilities. So either you start with a m and you make it a ba, because that's the oral stop that's voiced and labial. You start with a n, which is the alveolar, and you make it the oral stop, da, which is voiced and alveolar, or you start with that ng, right? And it's velar, so you make it the voiced velar stop, which is ga. So jam will become jab, spoon will become spood, and sing will become sig, right? So you're keeping everything the same, except you're just denasalizing, which again, if you can hold your, hold your nose, you can sort of get the same effect. So jab becomes jab, right? You just can't actually get the air to come out your, your nose, and so it comes out sounding actually like a B. And you can do this again for the N and the UNG becoming da and ga. And if you want to see some more examples, you can check out this lovely YouTube video. So we're going to actually now talk about the last one, which is the most complex. Uh, it's basically the most free form of substitution processes, which is assimilation. And the name means become more similar to, right? And that is the basic idea. Sound becomes more similar to another, usually nearby, not always sound, 
Okay, and what it does, how does it become more similar to something? It becomes more similar by taking on one or more of that other sound's features. Remember, there are three core features. The voicing, is it voiced or voiceless? The place of articulation, so is it labial, interdental, alveolar, postalveolar, velar, and so on? And manner of articulation, right? So is it a stop? Is it a fricative? Is it a nasal? Is it a glide? Is it a liquid? So on, right? And sometimes if you're... Uh, if you're a consonant and you're becoming like another consonant, we'll call that consonant harmony. Or you're a vowel and you're becoming like another vowel, we'll call that vowel harmony. The harmony, you're assimilating, you're harmonizing, right? It's a nice little analogy. But what I want to go through here are some examples of assimilation, right? So we have specific changes that have occurred, and what I want to show you is what that means on a feature-by-feature -feature basis, right? And so the way to figure these sorts of things out is, let's get this first one. So pig becoming big. So you have to think, well, what's different between p and b? And the answer is, well, these are these are both stops. They're both labial stops, actually. The only difference between p and b is the voicing. B is voiced, p is not voiced. So, okay, p is picking up voiced from something. What could it pick it up from? Well, there are two other sounds in this word. There's the i, and all vowels in English are voiced, so it could pick up voicing from the i. It could also pick up voicing from the go, which is a voiced velar stop. So p becomes b by picking up plus voice from either i or ga. Okay? And in fact, uh, I'll show you just what that looks like. I think here I showed you what ha that it's assimilating to the ga. But again, you can also get it from the vowel, which is what we see with push becoming bush, because it can't get it from sh. P becomes b by picking up voice, but sh is voiceless. So the only place that you could be getting voice from is that vowel u. Uh. Right? So push becomes bush because you're taking on plus voice from the vowel uh. Okay, so what about duck becoming guck? Well, what's different? Well, da is a voiced alveolar stop. Ga is a voiced velar stop. Okay, so you're changing the place of articulation. You're becoming velar. You're assimilating velar. Where are you getting velar from? Well, it's that ka, guess what, is a voiceless velar stop. So that's where you're getting it from. So da becomes ga by taking on plus velar of that ka sound. And about doggy becoming goggy. Okay, so once again, you're, kind of, you're trying to pick up plus velar, and you know what, you have another G right in that word, right? And so G is the voiced velar stop, so that's where you're gonna get that velar sound from. So doggy becomes goggy when the duh takes on plus velar from the other ga in the sound. So what about this one? Self becomes felf. You're like, okay, there's this other F here, I know it's, I know that's what it's assimilating to, right? But what did it, what changed? This is really our exercise here. So su, all right, so it's voiceless, it's alveolar, it's a fricative. What about fa? Well, it's voiceless, it's labiodental, and it's a fricative. So you're really just changing the place of articulation. You can actually get this by fronting as well, right? Because labiodental is a little further front. But if you're getting it from assimilation, which is another way to get it, where could you be getting labiodental from? And the answer is from the other F, right? So S becomes F by taking on the labiodental from the other F in that word. And what about this last one? Kathleen, so that th sound, becoming Kathleen. Okay, so once again, we know where it came from. It came from the other K, but what, what features changed here? So we have th, which is an interdental, voiceless fricative, and we have k, which is a velar, voiceless, uh, what was that, the other one? Velar, velar voiceless, I have the place of articulation, oh, stop, haha, <laughs> manner, uh, manner of articulation. Okay, so what's changing? So they're both voiceless, that's not changing. So place of articulation, interdental, versus velar, so you're picking up plus velar and you're picking it up from that other K. And this is a fricative and this is a stop, which means you need to pick up that stop also in this case from that other K, that's the only other place to get it. If you wanted to pick up fricative, you could probably, uh, actually you couldn't pick it up from anywhere else either. You really have to pick up both of those from that K, right? So you can take on multiple features, right? They don't have to come from the same place, but they, they often do. Right? And so you can get very, very uh, distinct changes, changing lots of different features at once by using assimilation, provided there is another sound in the word that has the features you're picking up.